Hello everyone, I Dr. Swaru. Welcome you all to my YouTube channel Pathotechy on pathology and technology related videos. If you are new to my channel, click subscribe to encourage us and see the latest on Pathotechy channel. Post your questions in the comment section. This video will be on pathology and on the topic congenital heart diseases. This is the third video on congenital heart diseases and will cover the topic right to left shunts. This video will be by Dr. CSBR Prasad, Professor of Pathology at Sri Devrajaras Medical College, Kolar. And uh, congenital heart diseases in order to understand clinically in a better way are classified into depending upon the shunt as I told already left to right or right to left or it may be a simple obstruction causing uh, the congenital anomalies. So coming to the first uh, segment that is malformations causing left to right shunt. So this left to right shunt, if you recollect your physiology, left side of the heart is uh, having higher pressure and right side of the heart at a lower pressure. So when there is a shunt between these two, that is like uh, ventricular septal defect or atrial septal defect, blood flows from left side into the right side. So it may not be associated with cyanosis. And uh, this is very important point. So, the for, for congenital heart diseases where you will see right to left shunt are associated with the development of uh, cyanosis from the birth, from, from, from the time of birth. Whereas the congenital heart diseases where there is left to right shunt, they may not have uh, the cyanosis to start with, but in the course of time, after few years, they may land in development of cyanosis because of reversal of shunt. It is known as Eisenmenger syndrome. So these are the examples for common uh, left to right shunts that is ASD, atrial septal defect where you can see the defective, uh, defective atrial septum and ventricular septal defect is the second one where you will see defect in the ventricular say interventricular septum and uh, the PDA instead of closing it remains patent. And coming to the second segment that is uh, malformations causing right to left shunt and they are usually associated with cyanosis from birth. And uh, the, the, this peculiarity of this syndrome is that they, in addition because of this deoxygenated blood circulating in the uh, body, uh, they will exhibit a peculiarity known as hypertrophic osteoarthropathy where you will see the patient uh, developing uh, clubbing involving almost all digits and in addition to that there will be thickening of the bone, thickening of the skin. And uh, because of this deoxygenated state, the patient may have in addition polycythemia. And another important uh, clinical implication of this right to left shunt is paradoxical embolism. I told you in the beginning paradoxical embolism, the instead of uh, 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 we can predict the embolus that is originating from the venous system to go into the pulmonary circulation. But in this paradoxical embolism, instead of going into the pulmonary circulation, it enters into the systemic circulation. So for this entry, there should be some um, openings either in the atrial system or in the interventricular septum. So this is associated with uh, the paradoxical embolism. But this paradoxical embolism also can occur without any proper communication. I will tell you in the uh, later slides. So congenital heart disease, these are the, some of the examples. You can see that uh, clubbing very well characterized here in this uh, uh, patient where you can see that uh, enlargement of the tips of the fingers, okay. It is one of the manifestation of uh, hypertrophic osteoarthropathy. Here again almost all digits are involved in this uh, swelling, um, you will call this as clubbing and you can see that uh, joint involvement in the form of swelling and the facial, facial involvement in the form of thickening of the skin. So these are all the examples for uh, pulmonary, uh, sorry, this uh, osteoarthropathy, okay. These are the clinical examples for uh, uh, the congenital heart diseases associated with right to left shunt, so which includes phallus tetralogy which is very common and in addition to that complete transposition of great vessels uh, and uh, which may be compatible with life only when there is a shunt like this VSD or uh, patent ductus arteriosus. And examples for this um, I told you already, it, uh, tetralogy of phallus, transposition of great, ves great uh, vessels and persistent truncus arteriosus tricuspid atresia and total anomaly and uh, coming to the most important or common uh, congenital heart disease is tetralogy of phallate 
and uh, this is right this is an example for right to left shunt and it is most common cyanotic congenital heart disease that are seen uh, in our practice so cardinal features of uh, tetralogy of phthalates are four as the name indicate, indicates it is four it has four components one is vsd and pulmonary stenosis overriding of aorta and ventricular uh, right ventricular hypertrophy so this uh, you can see in this image uh, the pulmonary stenosis the defect in the interventricular septum and uh, there is uh, the aorta slightly shifted towards the right ventricle and you can see the thickness of the wall of the right ventricle which is very uh, I mean uh, when compared to left ventricle it is more than that. So it is right ventricular hypertrophy these are the four components and uh, I will tell you what, how to remember these four components in an easier fashion. And uh, this is x-ray of uh, a patient suffering from phallus tetralogy and uh, a heart is enlarged it acquires the shape of a wooden boot. So earlier days we used to uh, I mean people used to use these boots and because of its resemblance it was uh, described as wooden boot shaped heart which is common seen, uh, commonly seen in x-ray of the tetralogy of phthalates. And uh, one more important clinical uh, clue to the um, existence of tetralogy of phthalate in a, a child is that her mother or parent will give you a typical history. So this uh, suffering from phallus of tetralogy while playing he takes a break and he squats for a few seconds again he resumes playing. So this is a typically seen in the case of tetralogy of phallus and uh, squatting usually compresses the femoral arteries so that there is uh, I mean increases the pressure on the right side so that there is effective permanent circulation uh, which is associated with certain amount of increased oxygenation of blood. And this thereby relieving the symptoms to a certain extent in a child after squatting. And persistent truncus arteriosus, if you look at the embryological development of heart, the, uh, there is only one great vessel which is uh, which develops a septum in the middle and which divides the, this septum divides the pulmonary artery from the aorta. Okay, uh, thereby making this as pulmonary artery and aorta. So sometimes this uh, failure of uh, development of this septum is associated with uh, a common uh, outlet which uh, drains both left and right side of the heart and uh, these patients will have invariably cyanotic heart disease. So they will have clubbing of the fingers or uh, osteoarthropathy and uh, their uh, uh, PCV is high which we will call as polycythemia and they are more prone for pulmonary infections. So any patient congenital I mean uh, uh, cyanotic since birth coming to you with the recurrent pulmonary infections you should think of the possibility of this uh, uh, persistent truncus arteriosus. You can see the normal left side represent uh, the normal heart right side you can see the both uh, there is no division between uh, the, uh, the aorta and pulmonary they exist and take origin in a common root and you can see that ventricular septal defect and uh, look at the color it is bluish. So the patient will have cyanotic heart disease. Question of great arteries, uh, so I told already that um, aorta taking origin from the right side and uh, pulmonary artery taking origin from the left side of the heart. So this results in uh, incompatible life. So there should be some communication in order to uh, make life compatible. So the patient may have a PDA or interventricular uh, ventricular septal defects otherwise is incompatible with life. And you can see this uh, image where uh, this uh, right side of the heart is connected to the aorta and left side of the heart is connected to the pulmonary trunk. Okay. And uh, I told already so uh, survival depends upon the existence of some shunts. And lastly the coartation of aorta, coartation of aorta is more commonly seen in males and uh, it is more common uh, uh, congenital anomaly that is uh, that can be associated with Turner syndrome. And uh, there are two classical forms that is infantile form and uh, adult forms and uh, these 50% uh, of the uh, coartation of aorta are associated with bicuspid aortic walls. And they also have what is known as baryonerisms in this involving circular villus. This is also very clinically important. So bicuspid aortic valve, baryonerisms, association of Turner syndrome are the 
uh, things to be remembered with uh, the coarctation of aorta. So these patients may come to you with uh, say intracerebral hemorrhage because of uh, cerebral uh, barrier aneurysms. A bicuspid aortic wall again may be associated with calcification and aortic stenosis in the course of time and uh, the congenital uh, I mean uh, genetic disorder that is Turner syndrome. So this uh, typical presentation of aortic uh, coarctation is the, um, the hypertension in the upper limbs and hypotension in the lower limbs. So if you look at the image narrowing of aorta after the great uh, uh, branches that is taking origin from the arch of aorta. So because of this low upper limbs are uh, having a, uh, a tension which is equal to the left ventricle whereas because of this narrowing post uh, stenotic areas uh, post stenotic uh, segment will have a lower pressure so the, which supplies the lower limbs so if you pressure if you measure the blood pressure in the lower limbs it will be less whereas in the upper limbs it will be high and uh, this because of this uh, there will be intercommunication or uh, dilatation of the arteries or communicating arteries involving mainly the intercostal arteries intercostal arteries and also the inter internal mammary chain arteries. So this dilatation is associated with notching of ribs, associated with notching of ribs which can be appreciated in the plain x-ray of the chest. So you can see here the dilated uh, intercostal vessels and also internal mammary arteries. So coming to the um, gist of this uh, congenital heart diseases, congenital heart disease represents defective development involving the heart or conduction system or greater vessels and uh, either it is due to the mostly genetic abnormalities involving gene mainly the hand 1 and hand 2 gene and uh, sometimes the it can be main environmental factors can influence the development of congenital heart disease wherein rubella you should not forget and alcoholism and uh, maternal diabetes and uh, they, this uh, uh, congenital heart disease is mainly divided into stenotic and shunt associated diseases. Again shunt whether it is right to left, uh, left to right is very important because uh, right to left are associated with cyanosis from the uh, birth itself. So this is very very important finding we should not forget. So if you look at uh, the incidence of congenital heart diseases, this is uh, VSD is the most commonest and phallus tetralogy has a typical history which uh, when elicited or when given you can make a diagnosis by listening to the patient. Thanks for watching. Do subscribe to this channel.